okay? So tonight we welcome Dr. Jim Marshall. I met Dr. Marshall when I taught for him in grad school up in University of North Texas. Dr. Marshall gained his BS in chemistry at Indiana University in 1962 and his PhD in organic chemistry at Ohio State University in 1966. The following year, Dr. Marshall joined the Department of Chemistry at the University of North Texas, where he's pretty much remained. At UNT, he developed a progressive program involving primarily conformational analysis utilizing carbon-13 NMR coupling constants. So some of my students have just learned about NMR today. <laughs> His research program at UNG has resulted in over 200 publications, including contribution in accounts of chemical research, reference book on carbon-13 NMR coupling constants, and several books on the history of chemistry and laboratory chemistry. Dr. Marshall has served as chairman of the DMW section of the American Chemical Society, and during the period of 1995 to 2003, was managing editor of the Southwest Retort, an ACS publication of the Southwest region. So if you're in ACS, you have seen this around. He has served in the, as an ACS national tour speaker for many years, and in 2011, he was elected as a fellow of the American Chemical Society. Between 1998 and 2010, he and his wife Jenny traveled extensively to Europe and have prepared a DVD, Rediscover of the Elements, which has now gone through its second edition in 2018, which is what he will be talking to us about tonight. In this rediscovery work, he and Jenny visited all the sites where the elements have been discovered. At their home is a complete collection of the elements, as well as all of the ores from the original sites where the elements were found. And as a side note, at UNT we have a beautiful display of the credit table, most of the elements in their actual form, which is on loan from Dr. Marshall. I never realized this was a unique thing because I went to school there. Apparently it's, it is pretty unique to see that. Presently, Dr. Marshall is a professor emeritus of the Department of Chemistry at UNT, where he continues to write extensively on his historical research. Uh, ordinarily, I talk about this last, but I'm going to talk about it first for a couple of minutes. Can you hear me at the back? Okay, good acoustics here. The DVD that she was talking about, my wife and I created, and she was an absolute genius, my wife was. She died four years ago, and we were, we were in the middle of a second edition of that, and I had to learn HTML language, oh my golly, <clears throat> in order to do that, but it has been done, and and we decided not to issue a DVD because that's becoming passe now, isn't it? In fact, some computers don't even have DVD, so it's online instead. And so this is the new, look at the, see, see the rediscovery, the third from the bottom there, rediscovery 792018, and there's the website at the top there. I'll give that again if you want it. Please go to it. <clears throat> we want it to be a working sh workshop for everybody. You go to this. It looks like this, and you have the choice here of the elements, which talk about, we have here photographs of all the elements, and this is the photographs of, my, of our collection here. <clears throat> and if we include some of this, we were just talking about uranium, weren't we, just a little bit earlier? Here's uranium, for example. This is a sample of uranium in our collection. This is a sample of the element in which it was originally discovered from, from Germany, Torbonite. <clears throat> this is... Come on, come on, come on. This is how uranium is usually displayed. These are all in our collection. And, these, and this is the, uh, and uh, go a little bit, come on, Oop, come on. <clears throat> Here's a sample, United States sample of uranium, which is gumite. <clears throat> and uh, then we have here Fiesta Ware. You ever heard of Fiesta Ware? <clears throat> okay, which has uranium in it, which used to be the, the largest consumer of uranium until World War II. And you know what happened in World War II, right? <clears throat> and then here's the other examples of fluorescent de depression glass and other uranium minerals and so on and so on. So these are, these are all in, in, in our particular collection. We can go back home again. We can go to the chemists and scientists. And so you can go, you can go visit some of the scientists. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to go pretty fast here. We can go, go to maps of the discoveries. Pick a country. Which one do you want? Oh, okay, here we go. All right. And here, here, there, here, these are maps of all the places that we have, we've, have uh, visited here. Which one do you want to go to? Los? Somebody said Los? Sure, okay. Uh, how, to, how to get to Los? Come on, come on, come on. Here, here are the, uh, here's maps and how. Well, we've been to all these places, of course. How to get to the mine. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, and, did, and we did this all before Google Earth. 
<laughs> yeah. And then here are, the, here are the photos here. And so what you can do is you can make a little trip to any of these places and literally go from one to the other. Notice here, here's a photograph here, and then you go to the next one, and then just you're walking down the street. And I, I could minimize this a little bit. And then so you, you do speak uh, <coughs> Swedish. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, okay, good, all right. Stora. And didn't that mean square? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no wonder you sit. And, the, and you're, you're walking through, and you're seeing all these places, and so on, and so on. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> then, if, if, you don't, if, if you don't like maps, we, have, we, we develop maps for all of these places. Uh, let me go, go back home again. And then we go, go back home again. And there was, then we have the... The, the, uh, <clears throat> the photographs of all these places. Come on. Whoops, where do you want to go? Well, probably. It looks, looks like we jumped on Switzerland. OK. <laughs> so we go to Bad Bregatz, which happens to be where Paracelsus has his museum. Again, you can walk through here, and there, there's a commentary on all this. And uh, <clears throat> going fast, I know, but I'm about ready to tell you the story how we got there in just a second. If you want the tables and the text files, then if you want to, you can go to the uh, table of primary discovery sites. And when you do that, you have the complete table of which element do you want? All the way through. I just, I just happened to land on neon. Discovery of isolation of air. Here's, here's who, who did it. Here's where they did it. And here are the coordinates. So, so that you, you can literally find it. B plus has a code where the building is still there, or it isn't there, or it's gone, or it's a mine, or whatever. Whew, told you we we're going to go fast. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if you want to slog through it, then uh, okay, okay. And then, if you don't like that, the tables you can go to the hexagon articles themselves, which has an article in each one of these that we published in the hexagon. That's a, that's a, that's the journal of Alpha Chi Sigma, and pick a journal. Which one do you want? Bromine? All right, we'll go to bromine. <clears throat> bromine, here's the article we wrote about bromine. There's a map on how to get there. Here are the, the salt flats where the bromine was found. Here's, here's where uh, Ballard went to get the samples. Here's a display at the museum. And here's the map how to get there. And here's where he was born. And so on and so on with the complete... It, with, with, with complete references here. This, uh, this was, when we finished, we, we, it took us 10 years to do this. And so finally, whew, we relaxed. We went to Europe every summer. I said, well, we, we're through with that. And Jenny said, no, we're not. And I said, what are you talking about? I says, we're going to have to put it into some, some sort of Wikipedia type thing. I said, are you kidding? You're nuts. She said, well, just a minute. Literally. She went all the way upstairs and came back down again and said, I've already done it. She had it all organized, all ready to go. God bless her soul. She died four years ago. I miss her in many ways. In that, in that particular case, she organized all this and was able to get this all together. We sold DVDs realizing that they're passe, and now it's online. Use it. It's, it's, it's a good tool, and, you can tell, and advertise it. Okay, enough for that. You want to hear how we did all that? Here we go. So I mean, Here we go. Rediscovery of the elements, how do we do this? We go to slideshow from, from the current slide. Here we go. All right. Ah. This is the International Year of the Periodic Table. You knew that. OK. Goethe, we're talking about him. He's a magnificent fellow. He got a degree in law, but he was also a scientist. He was a politician. He was a poet. He wrote Faustus. He organized the University of Jena. That's J-E-N-A. That's where Karl Marx studied in, in Germany. And he said, Die Geschichte der Wissenschaft ist die Wissenschaft selbst. Now, I, I happen to have a decoder. And so, <laughs> so we'll put it in English. I'm sure the person from Sweden speaks German, too, probably. Yeah, OK. <laughs> the history of science is science itself, which means if you want to understand science, let's put chemistry in there. Then you have to understand the history of chemistry, how it developed. 
um, the, the hypotheses and the, the theories and the experiments and the joys and the successes and the defeats and so on. Okay. There was a little novel called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And uh, it, it was just once a dream, but instead we have called this the alchemical dream where Jenny and I actually went to all this. The a dream all began with the National Mining Museum in Leadful, Colorado. Any of you ever been there? Yeah. Okay, cool. There's a display there. It's in, it, a display there on Freiburg, Saxony, where silver mining was an honorable profession. There's all the, the uh, do you see that arrow? Okay, all right, so I don't, I don't use the red. This photograph here got us going. The miners' axes and caps are used in their parades. There they are in the old times parading. Here they are in New Days parading the Bergparaden in Freiburg, Germany. So we just, we need to go see that, Jenny. We need to go see that. Okay, all right. Well, <clears throat> I was a flight instructor, still am technically, but I don't fly anymore. And the way we met was that my son was in her class because she was in middle school setting up the computer program. I told you she was good in computers. And he told her, my son told her that I've instructed airplanes. Oh, you think he'll instruct me? He said, oh, Dad, yes, says, my teacher wants you to teach her how to fly. I said, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I decided to do it and turned out to be the most memorable and, and uh, wonderful moment when we did meet. It all, and it all started, there are adventures when we were flying in this bonanza here, and we were, we were flying from Houston, where her, her home was, to Denton, and we're on top of the clouds right here, and it's the middle of the night, it's beautiful, we're on top of the clouds and the stars, and all of a sudden we were, boom! And that is not a noise you want to hear <laughs> when you're flying above the clouds in the dark. I said, oh, my, my, and what are we going to do? ATC says, I'll turn, turn left vector, stand by once. We've just lost all our power. And when you say stand by, any of you fly, they stand by. I said, whoops, what's going on? And we analyzed it and saw was, obviously the alternator had went off. Our battery would last maybe two hours. So we made the decision, we're going to, with ATC, we're going to shut off our electricity and we're going to fly above the clouds here. And we know there's breaks in the clouds in Denton and we'll find breaks in the clouds and we'll land and so we have to, we're going to cancel our IFR, that's instrument flight rules, flight plan. Okay, you click, are you declaring an emergency? No, because then we have to fill out a whole bunch of papers. We don't, we, <laughs> we, we, we don't, we don't want to do that. Whew, okay, so we did. We, there, break, there were breaks in the clouds, and there, oh, look at the little lights down there. Oh, there's a runway. Then we turn on the battery and had enough for our landing lights. Because we wanted to say, everything all was fine. He said, whew. Okay, we did that. And she said, ugh. I said, you know what? Jenny, there is this new gadget they're selling now called a GPS. <laughs> and we're going to get one of those things. Because what if we had been in the clouds and couldn't see anything? And, 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 there, and, there wasn't, and, there wasn't, and the ceiling went all the way to the ground. What would we do? I don't, what's a GPS? It says, well, it tells you where you are and how to get there. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and get one. But that was fortuitous, because then we used that immediately when to take it on our trips to, 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 to Europe. And then we, just, uh, we, we got married very quickly, and she said, where should we go on our honeymoon? I said, you know what, there's this book by Mary Elvira Weeks. It's a classic called Discovery of the Elements. Any of you ever seen it? It's published by the Journal of Chemical Education. And it is the best reference book I know of, written for its time. It was written in the 30s. I said, well, I want to go to all these sites that are in there, or at least some of them. <clears throat> she said, okay. Because you, she said, well, it's in this city somewhere. We can find it. We can go to this city. We can find it. And she said, she's a real trooper, Jenny was. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So we did. And so... <clears throat> Here is the iconic, here are all the elements right here. And that, this, is, this is complete, and these are all the ones that we have to discover. So here we go. We, 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 we invented this. And here's another one. All right, where are the elements discovered? Here are the New World discoveries, okay? Not very many. And actually, we have, we have not gone to South America 
and one of the reasons is platinum was discovered is little grains of white stuff in the in the um, in the river, and they used to used to throw it away because it was it was not malleable, so they couldn't make jewelry out. It was it was just a crummy thing to have, particularly when it got alloyed with gold. It made the gold brittle, and so it was it, it was undesirable thing. They're throwing away tons of this stuff. Uh, uh, uh. And but 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 we have and and. Uh, and we've gone most of the other sites. Here's a Europe. Here we cut to. All right, we're going through the periodic table. There's going to be a test on this afterwards. <laughs> and we go through here. We knew that this, this is where these elements were discovered in this particular city, and we just had to research it. And the timing was just perfect for our particular project for several reasons. Are we at the end yet? Nope, no, we're not at the end yet. Ruthenium, zinc, we have not been in zinc. Marco Polo noticed zinc because he was, he was going through. And that, that was in Iran. We, had, we did not go to Iran. <clears throat> but zinc actually was, was investigated more thoroughly in Germany. Are we, are we at the end yet? We're we getting there. Uh, you notice some of these are duplicated, you notice? And there's a very good reason for this. There we are. We will stop at uranium because you, that's, that's the last natural element. You've got to stop somewhere. And if you're going to be start doing the the ones which are after uranium, like neptunium, plutonium, americium, curium, berkelium, and so on. Uh, we'll, we'll just go to the university where they made it. <laughs> All right. Now, there may be multiple discovery sites. Here's an example for strontium. You see the mine for strontium was up here in Strontian, Scotland. And it actually was used as a medicine in the St. Thomas Hospital. And if you've been to London, St. Thomas Hospital is uh, where the people did their pilgrimage. And they, they, they would, the poor people would stop by there. And they, they, they'd give all sorts. Of, this is in the 1700s, these medicines to people. We'll see if this works. We'll see if this works. And they sometimes shove poisons down your throat. And then Crickshank's lab uh, actually separated all these. Then Hope in Scotland, in Edinburgh, uh, in Edinburgh Scotland, did a full characterization of it. And then Klaprot in Germany, we're going to see him later, did a confirmation of it. And then Davy, who actually isolated in the elemental forms, each one, remember that table I showed you earlier where an element could be described several times? Astronomy was described every time. In every one of those, there's an entry for this. So you, can, so you can find out exactly where each one of these was done. So where was strontium discovered? Take your pick. It was, it was it the mine, or was it the hospital that was first used, or was it where Hope, where he actually named it, or was it uh, Davy, who, who isolated the element for the first time? Well, it's a matter of personal choice, isn't it? And, the, and so we decided just to include all of them. Just include all of them. Here's another example. So the classic oxygen. Previously discovered deflogisticated air. <laughs> And uh, he did that by taking mercuric oxide, heating it up, and it would drive off the elemental oxygen. He collected it in a little, a little glass tube. Then we had a Schiele, who was in Sweden, and he called it uh, Els Luft. Uh, that's, that's Swedish, isn't it? Fire air. Uh, Feuerluf, the German for fire air. Yeah, fire air. Because he discovered, when he made oxygen, and, uh, it, little bits of charcoal would catch on fire, you know. And so... And then Lavoisier in France was the first, punch, first person to say, you know what, the elements are not fire, earth, water, and air. The elements are hydrogen, oxygen, azote, that's nitrogen, uh, zinc, copper, and they had a whole list of, of th 31 of them. So where was oxygen discovered? Take your pick. Okay, we include all of them in our table. Okay, here we go. All right, this is the perfect time for this particular project. Number one, the Iron Curtain had, was gone, so now you could go across the border to East Germany and to Romania and to Russia very, very easily. I remember we were there the first, my daughter and I went there for the first, very first time they opened up the subway in, in Berlin. Boy, that was a spooky time. The people were still having their Uzis, you know, and that was, that was awfully scary. Some of you who weren't even born yet have no idea how scary the situation was. Putin was there at that particular time, incidentally. That's why he's the, had the personality he has, because enough about that. <laughs> Here's Jenny. 
she was teaching internet and set up the computer program. She's a computer genius. She, she knew photography too. She was a genius in photography. She said, and furthermore, we need to do all these things. Here's a Macintosh Centris. And, uh, any of you remember that at all? Floppy disks went into here. <laughs> Here's the GPS. And she says, Jim, she called me Jimmy. Jimmy, there is this digital camera here, and we need to get that. And so the digital camera looks like this. Do you see what this thing is sticking out? It's a floppy disk. He said, oh my God, it must make horrible pictures. It made beautiful pictures. It made beautiful pictures. There have been articles in Scientific American saying sometimes they loaded up with too many pixels, but this had 120 by 80, uh, 100. 1,200 by 800 pixels and get beautiful photographs. And the optics were just tremendous. And now we would, could see what a picture looked like immediately after we took the photograph. I said, Do we need to take another one or is it okay? And then when we came home, we had a stack of floppy disks. <laughs> we were taking for two months in Europe and hauling them across. But it worked. It was really great. Okay. And GPS, we talked about that. In the year 2000, Bill Clinton actually reduced, uh, took away the military restrictions, so the resolution was now 20 meters. What is it now? Oh, about a centimeter resolution? But it's good enough to make maps. 20 meters resolution is good enough to make maps because we want to give a, 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 a latitude and longitude with high enough resolution so that you follow your GPS like you follow an iPhone nowadays, you know. And you see, it should be about right here. There it is. It's only 10 feet away. And that's close enough. Furthermore, what are you going to do for a museum? The top of the building, the front of the building, the side of the building, the front of the building. And so we just take the front door and let it go with that. All right. In fact, here's an example here. Do you remember the Da Vinci Code where they had these little plaques? And the reason is they go all the way from the observatory all the way down to the, uh, um, the Louvre. And we noticed that the longitude here was 2 degrees and 20 minutes. They do decimal now. We, we, did, we did minutes then. And that's very interesting because when we were reading the, pic, the stories about Humboldt, who went to the New World and described the discoveries there, his, latitude, his longitude was always off by 2 degrees and 20 minutes. Why? Because they used the Paris Meridian then as opposed to the Greenwich Meridian, because this was in the late 1700s. Very interesting. So you can do all sorts of things when you go through the history. All right. This is Oliver Sacks. That's our, that's our uh, collection. Uh, Heidi, this is the element at home, the collection at home. Yeah, it, this has not, th this has all the elements in all the ores that it came from. And there's Oliver Sacks who visited our elemental collection in 2001. You ever heard of Oliver Sacks? Any, anybody hear of Oliver Sacks? He, he was a fella who, uh, who wrote uh, <clears throat> Uncle Tungsten, talking about his boyhood stories. He, he played with chemistry as a boy, and he said the most fantastic experience he ever had was when he was, blew off the eyebrows of his brother. That was really exciting. <laughs> A cute man, just a beautiful man. Oliver Sacks is an example of a person I know who is such a genius and so smart. He doesn't have to show off anything. And he's not talking about all the wonderful things he does. He just talks about science and curiosity and so on. It's just a marvelous thing to be with him. I noticed that with Nobel laureates that I met, the few that I have, with one exception, that they, the, they're, 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 mar they're just, just a marvelous thing to talk to them, their curiosity, where it takes them, and so on. He's the kind of fellow that, who's like this, Oliver Sacks. And uh, he, he did awakenings. You may be more familiar than that. In fact, the doctor, uh, uh, who was Robin Williams, played by, played by Robin Williams, was playing Oliver Sacks. Okay, here we are again. Here he's melting gallium. The, the, the Disappearing Spoon was a book written by, by Keen, Sam Keen. If you can go to the YouTube and you, you look up melting gallium or melting spoon, and they make a spoon out of, a, uh, out of gallium there. And you see GA right below AL is right below aluminum. So it looks just like <laughs> aluminum. But when you make a spoon out of it and you put it in a hot tea, it just melts completely. So he decided he would do that. <laughs> 
So he said, do you, do you have some gallium? I said, Jenny, can you make some tea? <laughs> so he put the gallium in there and pfft, it melted and he drank the tea. It's not poisonous. And then, and, and then he put, said, let's this Ivan, have an ice cube, put an ice cube in there and freeze it back again, put it back in the collection. <laughs> cool guy, cool guy. All right. Out of the blue comes this autographical novel from one of my former students who wrote this book, The Tales of Six Tigers, by Cato McDaniel. He says, Jim, you know, you have these, re these, this, 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 these discovery uh, articles. Remember the hexagon articles I showed you before? Why don't you write what it was really felt like to do this instead of telling what you did? What did it feel like? I'm going to try to give you an idea of that. And uh, he, it's a glorious experience. OK. So the first thing we decided we were going to find is tellurium, which was uh, at the Fatsabai. Anybody speak Romanian? It happened once. <laughs> I said, I said, I said Fatsabai. Oh, God, you pronounced it horribly. Oh, <laughs> the Fatsabai mine in Romania, it's called Fatsabania in Hungarian. It used to be part of the Hungarian Empire back then. And it's the home of Dracula. And so we said, well, let's see if we can't find that place, OK? So all we knew was that it was up on a hill somewhere in, uh, in Romania, close to uh, the capital. And um, we looked up a professor there who ha we had a contact, and we we're going to go visit her. So we're on the train now. We're on the train going to Romania. This was right after the Iron Curtain, remember? And they were so stern and so disciplinary and so on. And when there's an American on board, said, don't worry about them. They're just acting communists, just like they used to. He said, don't take anything personally. And it's, it's very, very interesting cultural, culturally to see that happening. Look at this. See those haystacks? Didn't it just take you back in the novel, the novel written? Uh, Longfellow's poems, the kind of greamy feeling you have. Here's the Cluj Napoca, Romania. <clears throat> There is, look at that, the king of Hungary, but he also was claimed by both Hungarians and Romanians, the clash of the cultures there. Very, very fascinating. Here she is, this Dana Pop, who's a curator of the, ba the Babish Bolyai Museum. Bolyai is the mathematician, some of, you may, some, some of you may recognize her name, you may recognize his name. And very interesting. Tellurium was discovered in this particular mineral here, nagayite, or saccharumbite. This is the Hungarian, and this is the Romanian, OK? But look at the gold telluride, lead sulfide telluride. And see the black stuff in here? See the little black nodule, nodules in here? And if they heated that, it would release the gold, which wasn't very closely covalently bonded anyway, and ooze out this yellow gold material. And so it was magic material. And it was rich, rich gold mines there. And it was found in quartz. Here's quartz. What? See the, see the T with the little sedilla at the bottom? If you now say or C-U-A-R-T-S, quartz. That's how they spell it. So we have to learn new spelling and languages here, specimens in the, lang in, in the museum. OK. So we're planning the trip. All the maps were Hungarian. And we had some people in Hungary in there. Remember, this is part of the Hungarian Empire back then. With every world war, Hungarian shrinks smaller and smaller. So some of you may have noticed. In fact, I found out there, it, it, was, it was in the 60 minutes, wasn't it, where they were, they were telling how the Hungarians were advertising, please, please have babies, because we, 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 we want to make sure that the Hungarian culture and the language states it does, doesn't fade away. <clears throat> So the, the old maps were in Hungarian. And so all getting around there, so if we can find it, let's go. Let's get in our cars. This is the interstate on the way up to the mountains. They thought they found it. Here it is right here. It's a Fats, Fatsabaya mine. It's up here in the mountains. So maybe we could, it's, uh, let, let's see if we can't get there. All right. So we're going down the highway. And uh, here's the entrance to the Apuseni Mountains. That's the Transylvanian Mountains, you know, Dracula. Transylvania. OK. Look at the wonderful, wonderful scenes we can see along the way. Hungarian returning his lost sheep, just like the, the Jesus story in the, the, the parable. Yeah, yeah. And it's Zlatna. Uh, Zolotov is a Russian word for gold. 
Zlatna, how the pollution was just was horrible there. But this is the way it was, and so then we gather around here, and then the, that's what Cato, Cato McDaniel, he suggested the following. The reason he got me started was, he says, you know what, Jim? Remember he wrote, wrote the Tales of Six Tigers? He got us, why don't you tell the story of what it's really like? I'll bet you, you were up there at a mountaintop somewhere just getting them drunk off of vodka or something like that. And then, uh, and then they go, oh, I will take you up to the mine. He says, Cato, that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> Except it was Romanians and it was beer. I said, okay, all right. So, so they, they, were very, they were very delighted. Said, oh, they're interested in our country and so on. So we take, we take them up. Lots of, lots of in, in, interesting stories here. It gets very rustic now. I don't mind telling the story about the fact that says, Jenny came back and said, there's no toilet paper in the restroom. <laughs> no toilet paper in the restroom. See, all I could find was a, was a telephone book. And so we, <laughs> we talked... Some of you old timers know where we're going with this. And, and, and so we talked to the proprietor and said, there's no toilet, there's no, no, no toilet paper in the restroom. So well, did you find the telephone book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go, all right. Here we go, up the mine area, hold on for dear life. Dun, 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 bump, 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 hold on to this crash bar and so on. Road getting worse, there are no road maps. We were making them. Remember, we were using our GPS to make maps. There, Google Earth wasn't, wasn't with us yet. Uh, all right. Then this is part of the Hungarian kingdom. See here, see, look, look at these cross hammers here, cross hammers. That was the symbol, the icon of mining back in those days. Oh, everything, was in, every, everything was in Hungarian. Everything was in Hungarian here. Here's, here's an old, old uh, mansion of the, of the mining manager here. Oh, it's cranking up to the mine area. I think it's up. We knew where it was. We saw what the coordinates were on the map, and we had our GPS, so we could actually dial in the coordinates we thought it, were, it, it was, and so up we go, up we go, looking for analyzing for minerals along the way. That's Dana Pope again over here, and here's one of the, 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 the miners here, and there's the Taylor Slope. That is the telltale sign of the mine, because the waste materials would always tumble down in a waste heap like that, and up we go. Oh, wild blueberries, wait a minute. <laughs> see, see his purple lips? So they had to eat blueberries for a while, but then, and then we started on our, our hike up again, and finally we got to the, see it? There it is, Jenny, look, there it is, ta-da. <laughs> yep, that was the original mine, the Fatsabaya mine, Romanian, the Fasabanya mine. <clears throat> <clears throat> So when this is done, I almost bring tears in my eyes to recount to you. This. We just sat down on a rock together. I said, Jimmy, Jenny, we did it. So we did. We're the first Americans anyway who've been up here. And if we can do it for tellurium, we can do it for all of them. And that, and that, was, that was the impetus. That, that was the impetus. It was just a glorious moment. And actually, I've, I have started writing a novel on this, an autobiographical novel about in, in words, and I had to go to writing class for that. I said, you're just a horrible fiction writer. I mean, <laughs> because what you do is you tell them what you're going to tell them, and you tell them, and you tell them what you told them, and say, that's the scientific way. So you don't do that that way. You don't tell them. You leave them hanging. So they have to turn the page to see what happens next. Oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> that, that was the moment. That, that was the moment. And so on we went, went for a total of 10 years, and we found all the sites. There they are. With that moment, we realized that we can do tellurium and just be able to do all of the elements. See how scruffy they are and so on? I said, my God, is somebody you, you might meet in deep element that you're scared to death of? And they were like that, but they were so gentle and sweet. They hold, they grab the hand of my wife and kiss it, say, ma'am, I'm glad to know you, madam. They were so sweet and so polite. The different cultures you get are just fascinating. I just, new experience. Okay, that's what it felt like. All right. And so we also found Dracula while we're at it. <laughs> and Sigishwada, this is his birthplace. All right, how much time we got? That's what it's like finding a site, in a, a rural site. You want to find out what it's like finding an urban site, and I'll quit. And the urban site that we picked here was, was uh, Berlin, where there's a fellow by the, remember Klaprot? He's the guy who, ha, who verified that it was strontium. He's way over in Germany. 
we're going to tell you what it was like finding him. There is the Brandenburg Gate. So we're going to hunt for Martin Heinrich Klaproth, perhaps the best analytical chemist of the 1700s. Everybody would send their samples to him. He says, would you please verify this? And, and he did. He's discovered uranium and many, many other elements. If you go to the Museum für Naturkunde, which is the Museum of Natural History, is it not? And uh, you'll see that the Germans have a marvelous way of still showing exhibits in the form of collections as opposed to push buttons. And Jenny and I grieved over the fact that we'd gone away from the, the, the collections because he, if you were going to do butterfly collecting, for example, get a butterfly, come to the museum, compare it to the collection, go back home and go back in the field, come back this. Whereas now the test tends to be trendy. He says, well, we have to change the museum so that it's flashy and people are entertained. You can push a button. No, oh, isn't that funny? There's bubbles coming up. Okay, haha, but they don't, but, but, but they don't learn anything from it. But they still have collections here. One of the most notable things is the Archaeopteryx, yes. The first one, the, if you don't read German, you will now. Das Berliner Exemplar, that's the, 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 the uh, Ber Berlin sample, is that right? Sample, example of, of Ar Archaeopteryx. And uh, that's but what we were looking for. Oh, and while we're at it, talk about collections. In Week's book, she talks about uh, Vanadium, which would be having been discovered in Mexico, and the original sample which was sent from Mexico to or Europe to be analyzed was misanalyzed. They said, oh, it's just chromium, and it wasn't. It was a new element. But that original sample is on exhibit there in the museum, so you can photograph it. This is the original sample of vanadinite incorrectly analyzed by a European chemist. It's there. It's not back in stuffed in a, in, in a back room somewhere or archived. And here is the original language, and oh, it's from Simapan Hidalgo. Here's a mixture of, do you speak French too? <laughs> a little bit, okay, all right. V vanadium blei erz, which means vanadium lead earth, or ore. And then, it, and, then, and then it goes into French here. What happened is, is that the French an analyzed it, but then a German came along and said, no, it's not really this, it's actually this. And you see the history of it as people were correcting mistakes as we, as we went along from one language to another. You really had to know lots of languages back then. <clears throat> was, all right, and, this, and this, is what, this is what it said. <clears throat> all right. Okay, that's, 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 that's translation. We're running late, aren't we? Are we doing okay? Here is... Martin Heinrich Kaplot, he discovered beryllium, titanium, cerium, chromium, strontium, and co-discovered co strontium, zirconium, uranium, uranium, that's all. <laughs> here's, here's examples of it here, okay. Here's strontianite, the original sample of the discovery of strontium from strontium argyle. You know argyle, which is just down the road, is named for this county in Scotland. Yeah, Ar argyle, argyleshire, Scotland, Sturman for Scotland, Großbritannien, Great Britain. Now, now, you learn, now you know German, okay, yeah. <laughs> now you know German. And here is the original sample here. This is uh, Schmidt who, who took us back to the back and showed us the original samples of uranium, torbonite, and we have original sample of torbonite in our collection. In fact, you saw one with that little green mineral when I was flashing through and go through the uranium. It's, it's all there. Grüne Uran Glimmer. What's that? Green uranium glimmer is mica, mica, because it is, it is a form of mica. All right. All right. So now we've got to find out where he did it. This is a painting which we could find, which found the original apothecary. Apothecary? That's where a lot of the chemists did their chemistry then, in the back room of the apothecary, the pharmacist, the pharmacist either in a mine or an apothecary. And this is where Klaprot did his work at the, at the Weissen Schwan, which means white swan. Do you see this little thing right here? Can you see that? That's a little swan with wings. Can you see? Okay. Oh, my Lord. Okay. So all we need to do, and it's right across from the Heilige Geist Kirche, which is the Holy Ghost Church. So all we have, all we have to do is find the Holy Ghost Church 
and turn around and we're there. Well, fortunately, thank God for churches <laughs> because, because, because they last. They're still there. So the church that was there at that particular time is still here, here, now. So, okay. So this is the old painting of the Heidegger Geist Kirche of the church. And, uh, okay. You see that little white swan there? Oh, Jenny, look, white swan. Oh, my goodness. We have to find the Holy Ghost Church. Here's a photograph from the Catholic archives. Here's a apotheca right across from the Holy Ghost Church. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, we've got to find it. And here, we could. Here it is. See, I'm going back and forth. You see it? See this dome over here? There it is. See this tower here? There it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, ah. Oh. All we have to do <laughs> is turn around. Turn around. Hi. Yeah. It's a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> it's been taken over by the university. They tore down everything. Now it's a big, tall high rise, and it's a bookstore. But it's the site. So when I, on that text, remember the text where I had the B plus, or is telling you the building is still there, I have a B minus, which means the building is not there anymore. <laughs> but there it is. There it is. Okay. So you get these kind of disappointments. Well, that isn't the end of the story. The search had just begun because actually we realized that the discoveries were not done at the Zum Weissen Schwan, at the White Swan, but actually at the Zum Bären, which is the, the apothecary of the bears. So we have to go find it. Well, it's at the confluence of the Probststrasse and the Spandauer Strasse, where the two streets met, okay? How are we gonna find that out? Well, there's a model of Berlin <laughs> in a museum, and there it is. That, that, that's me looking at it, trying to find the confluence of those two. And by golly, is the Brandenburg tour here. That's the Brandenburg Gate. Hey, that isn't so big. It was a wooden gate back then. It wasn't the big high tower that it is now. Okay. And then the Nikolai Kirche is right next to that confluence we're talking about. It's right over there. Okay. Get closer to it. Here we go. There's the Nikolai Kirche. Here's the Heidegger Geist Kirche. Thun Weissenschwan. Thun Bären has to, has to be right there. Has to be right there. So I wonder if that street is there. Okay. While we're at it. In apothecaries back then, the way that they, the way they made their money is we imported raw opium, willow bark, that's aspirin, you know, oak apples, that's ink, you know. Other herb seeds made, they made their profits off tobacco, sugar, and brandwein, that's brandy. Soaps, perfumes, blah, 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 blah. And uh, they were going, they were rapidly going to the pub. See the soldiers going there and drinking a lot of the, um, the, the brandwein there, yes, yes. Okay. Here's the church, and here is Proststrasse, this street right here. All right, Jenny, let's go walking down this street. I don't know what we're going to see. I have no idea what we're going to see, but we've got to walk down it and see what we can find. We did just one heck of a lot of walking over there. I remember one time in Paris when they, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, subways were on strike, the metro was on strike. We had to walk all the way across the town. And they were so impressed, they were, by the Americans could actually walk, <laughs> that they gave us a special show and they held up, they, they, they allowed Jenny to hold up the gown of Madame Curie. That, that's in another talk. Uh, if I come back, I'll tell you about it sometime. Anyway, so we're walking. We're walking down here. Okay, there's the Probststrasse. What does Probst mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. It's been like the, here's, here's a church here, okay? And here's, what are these things right here? Well, the teddy bears. Because, 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 because right across here is the teddy bear shop here. Because they're selling the Berlin Bären, the Berlin bears. And so, okay, so we're going down here. All right, here is Zum Nussbaum, which means at the walnut tree. Zum Nussbaum. So we sat here at this table right here. And I'll tell you, uh, if I ever go back to Germany again, I, I, I want to go to this place. First of all, the Americans haven't found it. So it's just the same way it was with the, with the cobblestone streets and all that. And they bring the, 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 um, the, the, the onion soup there, and it is the most delicious stuff you can have in the world. And then they bring out a glass of white wine, 
If you don't drink, well, you probably would start after you drink some of that. <laughs> <laughs> because it is just ausgezeichnet. It's just fantastic. Because they don't send the best wines to America. They, they keep them. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, so we sat there. And we go inside, and there's a little exhibit and what it was like inside. And then we and see what we do here. All right, we sit here, and then we look across this way. You see, we're looking the wrong way because we came down this way. So we turn around, and we look. There's a plaque. Jenny, there's a plaque. How many times have we said that? Jimmy, there's a plaque. Jenny, there's a plaque. Quick. Oh, my Lord. Ugh. Oh, my God. <gasps> there he is. On diesem Ort, in sein Ort. You, you want the translation? <laughs> All right, here we go. You get the eye. Klaprot is there. Okay, at this site, this apothecary, he lived and worked in these particular dates. All the things he did, he discovered a lot of elements, <laughs> including uranium in 1789. So here it was. Well, his apothecary isn't there anymore, but there was the site. And actually, they blocked it off because, according to the maps, that, 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 sh that street should actually go all the way down to Spandauzer uh, Street, and where, where uh, and see, it isn't open, it was, it was blocked off. And, but something happened since then. This, I just discovered this photograph two months ago. This, I want you to look at this. Do you see the, the church here? This, see, the, the, the restaurant would be right here, okay? And it was blocked off here. But this is when it was open. And you see this? There's, there's the apothecary. It's called something else now. There's the apothecary. So we have it marked. So do we put a B plus here or a B minus? Well, it's a B minus because, of, because the building isn't there anymore, but we do know the site. So this is what it feels like. <laughs> Discovering an urban site there's a plaque. There it is. And so often this happens, and it gives extreme excitement. Anyway, you said 45 minutes, we're done then, aren't we? So it took 10 years, but we, we, did this, we were able to, to discover all the sites. And if you want to visit any of these sites, go to the website that I showed you at the, at the very beginning. It is designed to do that. When we first put out, we put, a, put out a DVD. It didn't market it. Now we want everybody to know about it. And so we're just telling everybody, go to it. It's free, it's available, and use it. <clears throat> and <laughs> there's, if you want to copy the sites there, <clears throat> here's the rediscovery site. Don't get confused by this percent 20. You know, that, that, that's the space, right? And my daughter, who's professor of genetics at uh, Arizona State, has a Facebook on it. And now she's putting them on YouTubes, too. <clears throat> because actually, we, we, we made um, lectures on all, all the elements. So we're starting to put that on YouTube as well. <clears throat> the story, I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end on this. Is I swear it happened 20 years ago, almost to the date, that I gave a talk where I'd just gone to Romania. And it was, it was, it was, a, it was a TCU. And I said, I, I, I think we're going to go and try to make all of them. This, is, this happened right after that. And we were looking in the book here to see, is, it, is this the book? OK, okay. to see, it, 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 it isn't in there. So I, I, I don't whether really I have a false memory of whether, or whether it was something else or some other kind of meeting. But Dr. Reinecke, he smiled real broadly. We did that. And said, that just gave us confirmation and the, the impetus, the encouragement to go ahead and do it. So I spent my time, haven't I? It's been a delight to be here. It's been a delight to be in chemistry. A delight to have the experience with Jenny. And uh, I guess now we, op we, ask, we ask for questions, if, if you want, and speak real loudly because I'm hard of hearing. Yeah. Yeah, yes? Yes. Like, yes, with the exception of the South American places. And the Marco Polo site and 
she, she asked if we, if we just visited not only, not only the mines, but all the, all the laboratories and all the other places. Yes, every, every place is listed there. Is a GPS on the table? Is a, is a GPS re, uh, reading that we actually took? When Google Earth came out, he said, oh my golly, <laughs> I wonder if they will agree. And they did. They, they did. Because I know the continents are drifting away from each other. <laughs> but but no, 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 we were not that old. So I guess we have, except, except for those places in South America, and the one in Greenland where, where aluminum cryolite was found. And, and why did you say again you didn't visit the ones in South America? No, we did not. Well, why? Why? Because it was somewhere in that river. <laughs> I, although, although on the website I do include, include photographs that were taken by somebody who had been there for me. Okay. Yeah. So every site is documented. Yeah. Every every site is documented. Mm. Yes. Uh, what's the favorite site you've ever been? Pardon? What's your favorite site of the element? Well, Spargel Zulpa. <laughs> Berlin. Oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. That was just delightful. Yeah. This is, there's something right, and there's something Heidelberg too, or Bunsen. That, 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 that's a favorite. That's a favorite. That, that's another talk. So not another time. Where Bunsen made his discoveries in Heidelberg, there's a plaque up there. Another plaque. Another plaque. That's another. That's a favorite. It says that in this building, uh, spectral analysis was invented by Kirchhoff and Bunsen, thereby unlocking the secrets of the cosmos. Oh, because before then, there's no way you're ever going to tell what elements are on the moon. Forget it. Let alone the stars. Wrong. That, 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 that site, too. Germany, that's actually one of my favorite places. Yeah. But yes? Do you think that this is the most fulfilling part of your professional career? Yes. She asked, is this the most thrilling part of my professional career? Yes, absolutely. It's to give us a capstone. I, I, I treasure it. Yeah. It's important that getting tenure was. <laughs> <laughs> it's important that getting tenure was. This, this is, that gets you in the heart. Yeah. Most exciting. 20 years. There's another question. Yeah. Who was the exception? Huh? You said all the Nobel laureates you met Two, there are two collections. Okay. The one collect that was on the advertisement is in the chemistry building on the second floor. Okay. The one which is in my home, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with, I didn't know what to do with that, but after I saw what the, yeah. science, the Museum of Science and Industry did at South Kensington, London, which really disappointed, they, they mothballed all those magnificent collections. And actually, I went to the Fort Worth Museum, too. Would you like to have this collection? I said, no, no, no. They would mothball it, too. It cannot be mothballed. So we're, what are we going to do with it? Now, if I would put it in the chemistry department at UNT, I have, I have a bad feeling about that, too, because I used to have a complete collection in Oak Ridge. And what happened was it would, it would be cannibalized. But I said, I need some ruthenium. Oh, there's some up there in that particular exhibit there in Oak Ridge. So I'll go grab that, and it's gone. So they would be cannibalized. My son, who teaches science in the Frisco, would give it to him and let him care for it. Because he can fondle it and love it. <laughs> Whereas I, anywhere else it would, it would. But that's where the other one it is at home. Anybody wants to see it, they come visit. <laughs> I'll give you some. We have a bottle of Mendeleev vodka, too. <laughs> It's, it never been, didn't break the bottle, didn't break the seal. It's just going to sit there forever. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. You guys' attention has been absolutely marvelous.
Isn't this exciting? Oh my gosh, just, oh, makes ripples go up down my back. What I don't know is where I'm going to publish the autobiographical novel. There's some other scenes in there too. Like well, one, one of them is the real tearjerker because after Pierre Curie, uh, after we walked, Jenny and I walked on the Pont Neuf, is where Pierre Curie was killed. But what are we going to do if one of us dies? That is what happened. That's a tearjerker sh chapter. I'm having a hard time with that chapter. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your attention.